I'm so happy uh, to announce that so we have done almost 80% of our work today. And uh, at the moment uh, is the time when uh, uh, the coordinators of the parallel sessions are going to speak for a moment. And as the first speaker, in, uh, in short, to explain the main concept, what happened, how it happened, because not all of us I had a chance to visit both rooms at the same time. So, Ms. Kasmin, the floor is yours to give a short overview. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Um, it's difficult to give a short overview of all the workshops that have taken place um, in Room A, but um, I would say that um, we had two things, definitely. We had commonality and we had diversity. And we had commonality in the sense that um, almost every single workshop uh, in one way or another related to telling a story uh, and the importance of telling stories. Whether it is the story of um, mathematical concepts uh, from a very early age to um, a much later stage in a, in a student's life to bias in stories and um, intercultural awareness when reading stories from certain parts of the world to um, uh, stories about um, little young children and the knowledge that they acquire step by step and um, how they can actually um, be encouraged to think and analyze and uh, it's okay to change their mind. Um, we had um, amazing presentations um, that gave us ideas for the future in terms of projects. Um, and we had a lot of diversity in terms of uh, the questions asks, uh, asked the audience. We had students in uh, some of the workshops uh, and they had interesting questions. Um, we had great collaboration and interaction between the workshop presenters and uh, some of our guests here today. And I dare say that um, everybody has got at least a couple of ideas that they can um, implement or explore further. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swinga, for leading the group. And so a few words from my side as well. I had a chance to lead the group B. And so I concluded with three keywords. Keyword one is uh, consistency and as well building of the knowledge, the construction of knowledge that happened in that room. Uh, word B or keyword B is uh, uh, engagement and as well bright eyes and sparkling eyes of the topics and as well actions teachers are doing and last but not the least is interaction as well between uh, the audience and as well the speaker and vice versa and i believe these three things were those that made room b special but i believe the same special was the room a so both uh, rooms had particular qualities and so uh, on this note, I'd like to give a floor uh, to another one speaker. And uh, for the whole day, we have thought or let's say stepped into the shoes of the teacher. But now let's look from the student perspective. I'd like to give a floor to my student. She's studying grade 11, uh, Raquel. Raquel. Uh, and she is going to speak about herself, about her experiences within the school, and she's going to, she, she did have as well support a group over there. You can wave, yeah. These are the, her supporters. But the core thing she's going to do today in here, she's going to give a student voice. And the floor for Raquel. Here you go. Thank you. One minute. You can start speaking. I'm going to turn oh, the presentation. Hey everyone, my name is Akhil. I'm originally from Brazil, but I'm here at Exemplary with a scholarship. And today we'll be talking about student expectations of high school teachers. So why is this important? Well, first of all, um, it is important that students have agency in their own education. And like any other human being, we have our preferences, we have our expectations and fears about the future. And the way that the teachers react to our expectations um, influence greatly the way that we learn in the classroom and how we interact back. But first of all, I have a question to all of you. 
In your opinion, what is the ideal teacher life? So I asked Carl to take out your devices. Uh, a cell phone works perfectly here. So we will be using Mentimeter for this. You can both scan the QR code or type the link here. And think of whatever comes to your mind, adjectives, um, characteristics. In your experience, in your past, in your education, what is the ideal teacher like? This is the concept that we will be discussing today. And all of your answers will form a world cloud here. Did anyone man did everyone manage to get in? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Can you can you come back to the QR code, please? Yep. And I believe I need to share the screen as well for the audience, even though I gave the uh, link as well. Okay. So here is the link. So if I can get a thumbs up, is did I manage to get in? Oh yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, so we already have some characteristics. So flexible, aware, kind, and also if you have not used the word cloud before, I would like to remind you that the biggest words here are the ones that get typed in the most. So they get bigger as we go. Oh, now we have a letter nice. So kind and creative. That is a good combination. So how many people are we expecting in the Mentimeter? We can spend one or two more minutes. OK. So while we wait, would anyone like to talk a little bit about these characteristics? Did anyone here say creative? Nice. Uh, would you like to say something about that? Should I take the microphone to you? Oh. I can scream. Yeah, please scream. Okay. Um, I would say that create, I would combine it together with curiosity, creative and curious, since it, it's, I guess, a source of, of power for both the teacher and the team. And uh, I guess, uh, to sum up, always being a learner, that would be the continuation of being great. That is a really nice way to put it. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Would anyone like to add to that? Okay. So let's see the final result. Maybe somebody else as well, Gabe. Oh, yeah, 16 persons. So still kind and creative and approachable. Caring and approachable. Mm -hmm. That is really interesting. Okay, so the reason why I make this is that. Most of us seems to seem to be in the same page right now, but these are characteristics that I personally would have never thought of before coming to ASO3, and I'm sure that my classmates in Brazil also would not have. So just so you know a little bit more about me, is this? Okay, that's it. Oh, thank you. So I come from a military school in Brazil. It is a public school, but it is a highly accredited one. It is considered one of the best. And I stay, I studied there for five years, and then I came here. So I had this great shift from one educational system, very strict, of course, very tied to the military, and then I came here to an international school. So the differences were quite stunning, especially when it comes to expectations. So, for example, like you said today, kind, caring, those were not words that we would use to a teacher at all. Next slide, please. Oh, wait. There is, yes, perfect. So this is a classroom in my previous school. And here are our expectations toward the teachers. Those were the main points that we would have in mind. So to us, teachers would always have the answers to all of our questions. So this idea of being the learner, for example, that was definitely not in our minds. They would prepare us well to our exams because that would be the main goal of studying in general, especially in high school. They would know how to control the classroom because silence is a must. All our classroom classrooms, if you walk into any of those in a military school, they look like this. So we have the teacher as the main focus and the place that all the students look at. You can notice that the students do not have a single page or pencil on their tables. And that is something quite normal that the teachers ask us to not write down anything and just listen to them. So teachers are always 
um, figures to be listened to, usually not questioned, and just give us the knowledge and all the answers that we need to do well in our exams, to get to go to university. And if they need to be harsh to do that, they can. So we would have many teachers that would scream at us during class, that would take us out of the classroom, or any sort of activity, even if harsh, but if they can establish authority, and if that is what they need to be effective and to get the, side, the class to be quiet, that would also be acceptable. So the focus here would always be on the domain of their feud, of the teachers, and their ability to explain it to us. So caring, kind, approachable, those were definitely not words that we would use here. Then I came to Exupery, and the idea of the teacher shifted a lot when I came here. Uh, suddenly the teacher was not the main focus of the classroom. I was not required to be silent on the contrary. Communication was a must, and every single day we would have to get into teams in English and global politics. So it was a really amazing shift. Looking for answers seemed to be more important than having the answers themselves. And engaging outside the classroom would always be important as well. And one thing that you have mentioned, but that I would have never thought of before, would be caring about our well-being. That was not something that we would um, think about at all. In Brazil, in my previous school, teachers would not care about us as people beyond our performance, but here, that is something that is definitely shocking, but also very present. So teachers act as more, more as a support in our learning than anything else, which definitely was really useful to me, and I believe it to be useful to every single student, because this is the way that we get engaged with the subject, that we are enthusiastic. So, it, there is a big difference, for example, from this classroom with the students laughing and everything, and the previous image, if we get to, yes, and that the students are just sitting down, a lot of my friends would just sleep doing classroom and that would also be fine. So, those, um, let's say, shifts in expectations and how the teachers act helped a lot um, on us to getting enth enthusiastic about what we are learning in general. And so here comes the question of why it is important to be enthusiastic. And turns out that it actually helps with performance. So the effectiveness that we thought that existed, for example, in my previous school and the system that I was in, is in fact quite questionable. This comes from the program for international student assessment, the PISA from the OECD. And what they did was to ask students to answer these affirmations with either disagree, agree, or strongly agree, and then match that with their performance in reading. And turns out that, thank you, in most countries, students scored higher in reading when they perceived their teachers as more enthusiastic, especially when they said that their teachers were interested in the subject. So enthusiasm seems to play a huge role in education. That is something that definitely as students we notice a lot, I'm sure. So my next step was also to conduct a similar survey here in Exupery with M5 and S1 students. And thankfully we got um, good answers, I would say. Mostly strongly agree or agree. We did get a little bit of disagree, but you know, we're not perfect. So the teachers do show enjoyment in teaching, for example, that was almost unanimous. The same goes for teachers like to deal with the topic of the lesson. And then the teachers also like teaching this. So it definitely made a difference to come to an environment like this, for example, and see how the teachers are engaging with us, how they care about our own being, and also how they are passionate about their field of study which is something that I definitely did not expect before coming here, but also definitely made me a better student. So, to conclude, I, I have noticed that what we expect most from the teachers here, is specifically in an open community, and a system where we do get to have a say, because this presentation, for example, could not have happened in my previous school, definitely. Um, that would be treason, I guess. <laughs> so here, 
we expect our teachers to explain topics in different ways. This is also actually adapted from the same survey that we conducted with 10 5 and S1 students. We asked them what their ideal image of a teacher would be. And so they said, they explain topics in different ways. They focus on the student. They, invest, they are invested in the learning process. They can adapt to our needs. So again, explain the topic in different ways if that is necessary. They are eager to help us inside the classroom. They are encouraging and friendly, and they are patient. So thinking of the Mentimeter that we filled out today, um, we do have a lot of similarities. We have caring, we have kind, we also have approachable here. So it is really nice to see that you are very aligned with the expectations that we have as students, but it is always important to remember to have those expectations in mind and work accordingly. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. So thank you very much. Uh, at the moment, we have around so five minutes till uh, the start of the end notes. So here we have real students. So dear audience, you have a great opportunity to ask the real student questions regarding or connected with the learning. So please, any questions? And as well, in the audience, uh, audience in Zoom, we're highly welcome to ask any questions. And of course, Raquel, thank you very much for uh, such a insightful, on the one hand, on the other hand, well prepared, and last but not the least, as well, structured presentation. Any comments, any questions, something to ask to Raquel? Please. I have a question, uh, let's say a political question. Um, if you went back right now to that previous school, of course, uh, what insights would you bring to this experience? I mean, I'm not sure that I would be allowed to bring the insights. <laughs> To be honest, uh, there were. I think that we did have some sort of awareness back in my school that there were certain things that could have been done better. We had teachers that were not engaged with us at all. Some of them did not even come to class, but that's another story. And <laughs> um, usually these critics would seem, the teachers would take them either personally or the administration of the school would take them personally. But, so it was really hard to drive change. It was a very traditional system. Hierarchy would count a lot as well. So teachers that were colonels, they would just read from the slides. There's not much that you can do. They wouldn't change. But definitely after coming here, I would, if I could, just present this, these different styles of teaching, for example, as we saw here today, uh, being engaging with the students, so actually letting them contribute to the lesson instead of just being a one-way uh, learning experience. I think that would, make, would have made a lot of difference. First. Maybe some more questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why were we looking for the question? Sir, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for highlighting our strengths. <laughs> you make me proud of all of us, of you as a student and the teachers. Uh, yeah, thank you. Real pleasure. Of course, thank you.